Hi, my name is Trudy Radke, and I am an OER ZTC specialist at College of the Canyons. Uh, I've helped develop about 80 open educational textbooks. Uh, we're also working on turning those textbooks into audiobooks and on making them accessible for the visually impaired. Um, I've had the privilege of working on this project in grad school, so I'm currently a student, and we utilize a lot of students uh, at College of the Canyons to help us give info and feedback on the books, also to put their design info on the books, and to work with professors to develop everything from math practice problems to taking the photographs for inside of the books and uh, checking for errors, grammar errors, things like that. Um, I was invited to this keynote by Paola Corti. Uh, I had the privilege of meeting her through my uh, supervisor, James uh, Gigi, from College of the Canyons. Um, she told me about this opportunity to speak at this conference, and of course I was very, very honored uh, and also very excited because I'm from Los Angeles and I got to go to Milan. Um, so that was really nice. And it's been a real pleasure to do this keynote. Working with uh, Robert and Julia and Paula has been a really profound experience. Uh, in OER, you know, the first word is open. And when you work with others, you really realize why that's such an important word. You really realize why it comes first. Because if you're not open to these experiences, but also if the material isn't open and you can't share it, this type of this type of conference and these type of materials won't exist. The key is open. Uh, yeah, I just, a willingness to share ideas and not lock our knowledge away, but to bring people in, like as Pola brought us in, because um, we all have something relevant to say at the end of the day. I was invited here by uh, Paola Corti, who's uh, one of the main organizers here in, in, in Milan, um, to do a keynote together with uh, two other students uh, and Paola. Um, and the idea was that we have very different backgrounds uh, when it comes to open education um, and that we together present our vision of what um, open education can be. So in, in my case, I'm not like uh, very, very experienced when it comes to open educational resources, um, but I have this other background of trying to make education more open, more accessible, um, by involving students, by giving students the power to share their own research. And in a way, that's the most fascinating thing really for me working with the other students and with Paola on, on this keynote was that I found out how much we might have different backgrounds, but also share like a, a, a same idea and a same vision. And uh, yeah, so I feel really empowered by, by being here. My name is Julia. I'm a student here at Polytechnicum. I'm, uh, I study computer engineering, so my focus is actually on uh, open software, not just open education. In fact, I've been uh, a member of uh, Polytechnic Open Unix Labs for five years, and uh, uh, Pol is a computer club a student association which has a focus on uh, free software and uh, open technologies. And uh, what we do is we organize courses about these topics and these courses are open to everyone. They're mainly meant for students, but we also have some people from uh, outside of uh, university who come to follow the lessons. And we um, release the slides, uh, all the material we use and the videos of the courses with a free license online. Um, I'm here at the conference because I too was invited by Paola Corti to take part in this keynote and uh, I'd actually never heard the word uh, open education before but I realized it was what I was doing and uh, I really really think that this philosophy and culture of open uh, can be applied to many different fields and each one of those fields is going to benefit from it because uh, software can get uh, better quality, uh, better reviews, uh, um, it can help a lot of people, but also in education, I think openness is uh, fundamental. My first semester of school, um, I my parents had never been to college, so I didn't really understand the process of going to school at all, really. But I knew I wanted to go, and I knew that it was very important for me to get an education. Uh, I took myself 
to the campus. I enrolled myself. I filled out my financial aid forms by myself. Um, I honestly don't even know if I thought about textbooks, really, at all. I went to the campus bookstore because that made sense to me, because that's where the books would be. And when I went to purchase all of the books in my course list, it came out to about uh, $700, 630 euro. Um, that was an impossible number. There was no way I could afford that. In fact, I had saved all summer to buy new glasses. <laughs> and it, they were going to be actually even a little bit less than my textbooks, but I ultimately decided to get the glasses because there was no way to afford both. And um, fortunately, I could see, but unfortunately, in the beginning of that semester, my grades did suffer because I did not have those supplemental learning materials. And students need those supplemental learning materials because learning is a two-way process. You have to hear what the professor is saying, but you have to go home and you have to learn it for yourself. And I didn't have an opportunity to do that with traditional textbooks. So I went online, I found what I could, um, and I didn't know it at the time, but I was finding these sources that I could download for free. And they ended up being, later I found out, open educational resources. And that that profoundly, it changed my whole collegiate experience because without those sources, I would not have been able to supplement what I was learning in class. And yes, I, I could have looked at sources that weren't open and I did, but I could download the open sources and I could take them with me. And when you're from a lower socioeconomic background, you don't always have access to Wi-Fi. You don't always have access to a computer. You don't always have access to a phone. And so being able to download those sources and take them with me, make them my own because they were open, it was profoundly helpful. My name is Robert, um, Robert Krakenberg. I'm from the Ruhr Universität in Bochum, Germany. And um, with other students, I started the Hermion project. It's a project where students teach other students. So um, they are empowered to tell of their research that they did as students and we give students this way we give students an opportunity to share uh, their research which normally um, nobody would read apart from the professor maybe that uh, corrected their work um, and we also allow them to share the research story that's how we call it so how they got to their findings so we make also those transparent so other students can learn from the experience that these students had.